Hi guys, it's Jeff here, the Photographer's Mentor, and in this short video, I'm going to tell you how to get more traffic to your photography website, and at the same time, grow an impressive email list of future clients you can remarket to. So firstly, how do you get more traffic to your website? Well, what you need to understand is your website has two entrances. It has a front door and it has a back door, or it should have a back door. And your back door is your blog, and your front door is your homepage. And to understand how to get more traffic to your blog and also to your homepage, you've got to understand what I call search intent. So search intent is what people are typing into Google search engine or Bing search engine when they are looking for you or your services, or they have a problem that they need to fix. So there's two types of search intent. First search intent is direct search intent. And direct search intent is by people who are pretty much ready to buy. Um, so these could be people who, in my case, they're typing in photography mentoring, photography mentoring programs, uh, photography business marketing. They know what they want. They know they're looking for a program. They know they're looking to get some uh, marketing for their business. And that is what they're typing directly into Google. These people are probably ready to buy or in the process of doing their research and then making an informed decision of what their purchase is going to be. So if you're a wedding photographer, they might be typing in things like wedding photographers in my local area. But then they might be even more defined because they might be typing in country style wedding photographers fun and re relaxed wedding photography. So they've been to a few photographers' websites. They've seen uh, different styles of wedding photography, and now they've narrowed it down even more. So I like the fun and relaxed stuff. I like the documentary type wedding photography. I like the country style wedding photography because I'm getting married in a country venue. So they've probably started with the original search of wedding photography and then narrowed down even more. So that is the search intent. So in order to understand the search intent and to get traffic to that search intent, you've got to think about your clients. What are your ideal clients? Who are they? What are they searching for? What keywords are they typing into Google? And this is where you start to get your keywords onto the homepage of your website in what you call your H1 tag, which is your big a uh, title at the very beginning of your web page, usually on your banner, your H2 tag, which is your, your next title down, your subheadings, and your H3 tags, which is your, your smaller subheadings. So you should be putting these relevant keywords into your content, but not overstuffing it. It needs to flow and it needs to be very readable and take the client on a journey, uh, what I call a scroll to a sale journey. So it takes them through the whole process of explaining about your services, empathizing with them, telling them the benefits of what you do, qualifying with them, uh, qualifying them with a price, and then driving them to take action. But at, throughout this stage, you're utilizing the keywords that you know your clients are going to be searching for. So that is the first way, and that is the direct search. So start to do some keyword research. Think about what your ideal clients are searching for. Don't just try and get the word photography or photographer in your local area niche down because the more direct you can get when somebody goes from wedding photography to country house wedding photography or um, documentary photography they're probably in a more defined position to buy they're ready to buy because they've gone from a broad search into a narrower search they've now got their focus on something that they really really want they really need and they're ready to make that purchase it's like if you type in uh, new cars or if you type in um, mercedes but then you type in Mercedes C-Class AMG, you've narrowed it down, you decide what type of Mercedes you want, what class you want, and what specification. So you're much more in a buying position when you come down to there. So the second form of search intent is indirect search intent. So this is where people probably aren't yet at the position to buy from you, but they are probably potential clients. And this is where your blog comes into action. So a lot of photographers make the mistake of having a blog, calling their blog, blog, and then just creating blog posts about jobs that they've done or shoots that they've been on. Now, the problem with this is the blog is then not very attractive to these people who are what I call your indirect search intent people. Um, 
because the only person that blog's attractive to is the photographer and the people who are in the shoot if you're just writing a blog about your latest shoot that you've done. Now again, let's imagine uh, we're, for, for this example, a pet photographer. So a pet photographer, you could start writing blogs about um, how to take photographs of your pet, how to take great pictures of your pet on your mobile phone. You could start sharing training tips or great dog walks in your local area, how to get your dog to sit, how to get your dog to stop pulling on the leash. Now, who are gonna be reading these blogs? People who are dog owners, people who are typing into Google, how to take better pictures of my dog, uh, best walks for my dog in Edinburgh. So this is where your blog really comes into its own because your blog is there to help inspire and educate people who down the line are potentially gonna be your ideal clients. They are gonna to come to your blog, find it inspiring, read your blog, and then sign up to your email list so that they receive regular current blogs from you. And this is the way you get your blog to actually drive traffic to your website, get people onto your email list so you can remarket to them, so you can send them out your seasonal offers. You can send them an email every time you create a blog to get them to come back and read your next blog. And what this does, it builds relationships. And remember, people buy from people who they know, like, and trust. So this is really, really, really powerful and something a lot of photographers don't do. They don't utilize their blog correctly. And yes, it takes a bit of time to write a blog. But remember, when you write that blog, you can repurpose it. I write blogs and my blogs are around about 2,000 to 2,500 words. And they're usually in a step format. So five points to a solution and then broken down into subheadings. So you have the big title for what the blog is and then break it down into sections. Try doing this, try doing that, try doing this. All these little tips, all these steps to the perfect end solution. Now, each one of those subsections within the blog will have an image with it and a, and a, a subheading and then some content. And then the blog will be summarized right at the very end. Now think about it. Once you've written that blog, it's up there on your website bringing traffic to your website on a regular basis when people are typing into the searches. But the blog just ha doesn't have to stay there like that. That blog can be repurposed. So you can then utilize each one of those individual steps as smaller social media posts over the course of a few weeks. You can also repurpose that blog and rehash it slightly and create it as a LinkedIn article. You can also create that blog as a helpful PDF. And this is something I have a lot of. I have over 200 um, pieces of what I call IP, intellectual property. These are brochures, slideshows, PowerPoints, um, webinars, videos like this that I have created that answer my customers or potential customers' problems. So when I've written a blog, I can send that to a designer who creates it into a really, really nice PDF. And then if somebody has a question or somebody reaches out to me on social media, I can send them a great PDF. It looks professional, it creates the right first impression and it elevates their, their um, perceived value of me and it makes my brand look good. So it's all about building those relationships. So when you write a blog, don't just think, oh, that's it, I've just written a blog, you know, and forget about it, repurpose that blog. And remember, you can also write books as well. I know plenty of my clients who have written a lot of blogs on a particular subject and then condensed those blogs together and written a book. It could be an ebook or it could be actually a physical book that is, uh, is put up there and printed on Amazon. So that is the two ways to get traffic to your website. Direct search for people who are ready to buy and ready to make a purchase from, from you and they're going straight for what they're actually looking for. And indirect search from people who are looking for things relative to what your niche is. So that could be a wedding, uh, you know, bride who hasn't yet booked a photographer who is in the, the, the throes of planning her wedding. So she's typing in how to have a stress-free wedding. Um, great uh, country wedding venues in Derbyshire. Uh, how to plan uh, my dream wedding in Scotland or how to have a Scottish themed wedding. Just think of all the ideas. Now these people probably haven't even booked their venue yet. They're very early down the line, but if you can make that connection with them early on and start serving them and giving them blog content, they're gonna think about you first when it comes to a photographer. Hope you found this useful, guys. If you need any help, as always, just reach out to me 
visit my website at thephotographersmentor.com or check out my new website, thephotographersuite.com. You'll see it in the on the screen there. And this is my new um, photography website business that helps photographers convert more visitors into paying customers and grow their business email lists. Thanks again, guys, and look forward to seeing you in the next video.